Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'm discussing the classic 1981 Australian post-apocalyptic dystopian action film and sequel to the 1979 classic Mad Max, Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior. And one as once again directed by George Miller following his feature film directorial debut with the first film in the series, the aforementioned 1979 feature Mad Max. The film follows from the events of the first movie and returns Mel Gibson to the titular role of Mad Max who, after losing his family at the end of the last movie, now travels alone with his dog across the barren wastelands of Australia on a never-ending search for water and gasoline in a fight of survival and in a bid to stay alive against the marauding gangs that now roam the roadways. Following the devastation of a global world war, the remaining survivors are left to fend against the harsh realities of such a life, where your next turn could see you left for dead in everybody's relentless search for that most precious of substances, gasoline. In his ever unyielding search, Max happens across a group of survivors who have managed to get an oil refinery up and running, but in doing so have attracted the attention of a roaming gang looking to take the precious oil for themselves. Initially looking to take the gasoline for himself, Max soon finds himself working with the survivors in order to fend off the ravenous marauders and find a way to transport their precious cargo out of the outback to the coast where they will one day hope to make a settlement for themselves. One of the last remnants of he, of a humanity, you know, now long since forgotten. So, now, what a complete upgrade and investing entry this was after the first in the series. Not a completely different movie. In fact, this is very much like Miller's Evil Dead 2. It has a very kind of similar feel to the first. Many of the same themes, but gives them a kind of a newfound energy and commitment. Making this feel very much like this was the film Miller wished he could have kind of given us with the first. It fills in much of the backstory to the kind of prior apocalypse, you know, apocalyptic events which occurred prior to the first movie, which kind of felt neglected in that instalment. And as a result, you get much of a better idea of the kind of collapsed society in which events now take place. And as such, understand more of the plight, the suffering and motivation of the characters. This instalment has much more of a kind of mainstream feel, whilst at the same time kind of keeping many of the eccentricities and over-embellished characters, you know, those traits, that, you know, those kind of things that we had in the original. In fact, this time around, kind of some are even more over the top than before. But this time around, they are kind of presented in such a way that they feel more accessible, more in line with the overall plot more integrated, more rationalised. They are a lot more fun, most definitely kind of feeding into this upside down world full of crazies and those, you know, just looking to kind of get through each minute alive. It has much more of an apocalyptic feel from the start, much more kind of desolate and kind of degraded. Very kind of little of society now remains and the transition in terms of story and symbolism between the first and second movies is vast. The world has changed significantly and Miller kind of works this into the movie's vast visuals and storytelling throughout. It is clear this is not the world we know anymore and indeed on that basis, you know, far removed from the world depicted in the original movie. With this, the first is, you know, now makes a lot more sense. And the journey of the people of the, you know, of this land have gone through kind of seems more relevant than ever. A total loss on the grip of society and the kind of the meltdown of conventional law and order. It makes it clear exactly where the world was heading. The film also makes exceedingly immersive use of the kind of sweeping and kind of desolate landscapes of the Australian outback, producing kind of this overly dramatic, isolated and kind of desperate situation for the characters against the arid and kind of 
testing conditions of their surroundings. The location also provides kind of some scope for some real wide angle shots of the action as it unfolds, which provide this kind of extraordinary look, which provide an extraordinary level of detail and a distinct impression of the scope and despondency of that situation, giving it a very kind of Wild West feel, a Western with a kind of destruction derby slant and standoff. In fact, the cinematography on a whole is much crisper, more focused as the story itself. And indeed, the action, which by the end of the movie, really kind of feels like a complete kind of onslaught. Action-wise, this is top-notch, significantly more involved and up close and personal, significantly more brutal and graphic. The vehicles involved from the cars to the trucks, those that fly and, and kind of the other contraptions used are totally inventive, mechanic and evolved. Completing and complementing the characters as an extension of their kind of eccentric egos. You can definitely tell this had, you know, a much bigger budget in that respect, allowing for much more kind of a vision to be explored and presented. Miller's eccentric style certainly kind of shines through into his characters, which I felt in this instalment, whilst they were more over the top than we had, their energy, their, you know, their, their personal and kind of flamboyance was not unnoticed, you know, not un, unappreciated. Characters, you know, they felt more involved this time around. Miller has kind of, you know, certainly been more playful with his creations in this respect. We have some distinctly colourful and ostentatious villains. We, we still kind of detached from them in the main. They're not kind of wholly much more than being two-dimensional for what they are, being no further kind of fleshed out than kind of needed, but... To be honest, this time around, Miller adds a brilliant kind of dark, comedic edge to them, which kind of gives them this kind of bit of flair, you know, kind of a slight slapstick and a little more kind of tongue-in-cheek delivery. Overall, it's that which makes this one much more fun to kind of ride along with. Gibson feels like he's kind of a better fit for the role this time around too. Much more comfortable, experienced certainly kind of killing that kind of broody and solitary kind of look which keeps out you know the our attention in the mo to this movie's character on, on a more personal basis this time around overall the second mad max installment brings us the world as it should have been depicted in the first movie filling in a lot of the kind of narrative gaps and the backstory kind of surrounding the apocalyptic events which have driven the characters of the movie to fight for every last drop of gasoline as they can kind of get their hands on. This has much more of a dystopian vibe and certainly more scope to expanding the frontiers and intricacies of the world into which humanity has now devolved. It's a simple idea in the end that's been effortlessly executed with a raw and gritty style that's definitely up, you know, that definitely ups the series game from the first instalment. Being more adventurous with the concept bold and a lot more flamboyant. The practical effects and stunts are simply amazing. Um, Miller has gone into great detail both up close and from a distance to kind of really make this an immersive and tangible experience. One we can see, hear and almost touch, accumulating in all-out carnage and a relentless pursuit. Outback truckers to the extreme. So... That brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.